Hey guys, welcome to Algos Explained. My name is David Kim, and in this video, we're going to be looking at a JavaScript question from Code Wars. And this one's a level 7 question, uh, so keep that in mind. It's not going to be too tough, but um, I felt like the directions on this was kind of unclear, but um, in the end, you know, uh, we, we can always figure it out. So this one is called Sum of the First Nth Term of Series. And so let's go ahead and get to reading the task. Your task is to write a function which returns the sum of the following series up to nth term parameter. So pretty much uh, we're going to be given a number n and that's kind of uh, how many times we're going to do something. So this is kind of the series that they're showing us. Uh, we have a 1, a 1 fourth, 1 seventh, 1 tenth, 1 thirteenth, and 1 sixteenth, and etc. Depending on what kind of, depending on what your parameter is or your argument, your n. And so the rules here, uh, hopefully, um, here, let, let's go ahead and read it. You need to round the answer to two decimal places and return it as a string. So, okay, uh, that already gives us a clue as to kind of how we're going to be outputting something. If it's not already a string, we're going to have to make it a string, and um, which often after a, a number calculation, it's a number. So we're going to have to like uh, mutate that somehow. And if given the value, if given value is zero, then it should return 0, 0.00. Only you only you will only be given natural numbers as arguments. Okay, cool. So they won't be giving us decimal places as the as their arguments. That's a good thing. And so nothing here mentioned kind of why these fractions were given to us. Um, and this just this last example. If we're given a one, we have to output a 1.00 if we're given a 2 we're going to be doing this twice if we're given a 5 looks like we have five additions to do 1 2 3 4 5 and so I was thinking okay after I read this I was like okay how the heck did they come up with 1 fourth and does that even matter uh, for us and uh, it turns out it doesn't matter because uh, I mean if we're looking at these examples uh, we can see that if when we're given the argument of one, we get we get go for a one as our answer or one point zero zero as our answer. After we get that and we make that into this, and when we got the two, we got the one and the one fourth, and when we got the five, we got the one and the one fourth again. So that that goes to show that no matter what this n is going to be, this argument that we're going to be given, it's always going to be this um, this kind of trend or this kind of uh, pattern of fractions that we're going to be be having to work with. And so pretty much the hardest thing here at this point is not deciding why did they choose one fourth, one seventh, and one tenth. It's kind of this, uh, it's just kind of figuring out how do we get to that and how do we use that pattern to our advantage because now we know, okay, that is the pattern that they want and they're not going to be, uh, they're not asking us to kind of change the pattern on them. They're just asking us to use the pattern that they give us. And so let's go ahead and start with uh, creating a sum and we know that they're going to want that. So return sum at the very end. And uh, yeah, and this is already wrong because if we just output it like this, we know that this is a number and this is going to be returning a number type. They want a string like this, and so um, we're going to have to change that somewhere in the middle or somewhere at the end later. But we do know that we're going to have to do something n number of times, and whenever that happens, the best way to do that is with a for loop. Uh, let's do an n and i plus plus. Or, well, maybe not the best way with a for loop. I mean, there's different ways to do it, but definitely one of the easiest ways and one of the clearest ways that I can do it um, and show you the process very clearly. So now we've got to figure out, okay, how do we get that one fourth and one seventh, and what does that have to do with each other? Um, if we look at these numbers carefully, we have a, a one and a one fourth. And so when we go from one fourth to one seventh, it's adding a three at the denominator. And when we go to the one tenth and the one thirteenth, we're just adding threes down there. And if you think about it, we're adding a three from the one and the one over four too, the one fourth, because a one is just a one over one. And so if it's one over one plus, uh, and we're going to the next one, that's one over one. We add three to the denominator. That's going to give us a one fourth as our next number. When we take the one fourth and we add a three to the denominator, that's going to give us a one seventh. And so we know for sure that okay. Every time we go for an n, we're going to have to, well, we're going to initially start with 1 over 1. That's kind of how we have to think about it. But every time we kind of um, do another uh, addition, we're just going to have to increase the denominator. And, of course, that's going to not make the number go as fast as if we were adding it to the numerator. Um, but 
whatever that's kind of what they're asking for and so let's go ahead and uh, do this um, we're gonna plus equals one over the denominator denominator and well, let's go ahead and create that denominator right here uh, let denominator equals one and so if this only only went one once then the sum is going to plus equals one over one which will give us a one out and so let's go ahead and make sure that denominator increments by three by doing um, denominator plus equals three cool and so now lastly what we do have to worry about is okay what is this number going to be looking like once we get to like kind of if n goes really deep then that is going to have a lot of decimal places and they definitely they, they only want two decimal places and so you might be thinking okay there's a couple ways to do it there's math.round um, that's the initial way that I was looking at doing it but it looks like they're not really too friendly with decimal rounding they're just uh, really friendly with whole number rounding and so I was looking at other ways to do it I could create a function in here to do that for me but there's this one called uh, uh, we take the number and we do a two fixed on it and there's also a two precision with something else that I ran into but two precision kind of takes that entire number and makes it into um, uh, let me show you I guess right here if we do like uh, 2.123 the two fixed and we put in a number here then we will get a decimal place we'll, we'll get we'll get two decimal places now if we did the same thing with uh, two precision which is just happens to be another function that I ran into so I'm just explaining it to you right here pre precision if we do two they only want two numbers and so it doesn't matter if we do like a, um, if we do like a four or let's do a five then we're gonna get one two uh, three and uh, there whereas if we did a two fixed to five I believe that we're going to get something like that and so we are definitely going to be doing two fixed in case uh, well I mean yeah it's never really gonna go I don't, I don't predict this gonna go really too high but let's just go with two fixed and we're gonna put a two there and pretty much we know that that's gonna work because we only want two decimal places we're gonna take the number two fixed and and a good thing about these uh, two fix, it just happens to return a string. And I don't know, that's just one of the weird things about uh, JavaScript sometimes, you know, you, you do a function to something and it kind of changes kind of what it, what, it, what the type is. Um, yeah, it's just one of the weird things that JavaScript does. You would expect, you know, you do, a, you do, you apply a function to a number, it's going to remain as a number, but this happens to come out as a string. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Let's go ahead and attempt this and see what we get. Cool, so that passed all 50 tests um, as expected. And so yeah, this was uh, one of those JavaScript videos. If you enjoyed it, uh, comment it, uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, go ahead and check out my other videos. I have uh, a lot more of these JavaScript ones from Code Wars specifically just because that's the, my favorite platform right now. And um, if you guys want uh, harder questions like level level 6, level 5, level 4. Um, I usually tend not to go to level 5 and 4s and, and higher up just because they take longer. And um, But yeah, if you guys want to just comment it and I'll, I'll throw some of those out there too. And so hopefully you enjoyed this one. Uh, like I said, like, comment, and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.